Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and complete commission projects for clients all around the country. Today, I'm going to do a, I'm making a sample for a client for a bedroom in this beautiful, rich, Merlot color, Grisello lime-based Venetian plaster. So, let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. All right, here we go. Texture trial for the Marmarino, simply because Marmarino has an aggregate in it. We are, I, my trials are different. This is for my smooth, polished, fine plasters, which we'll use later in this process. This is for the heavy, or the te anything with a texture or a granular in it, because it's going to scratch this. That's fine. I don't want it to scratch my $70 trial. All right, very simple. This is 30, this is 70, this is more delicate. This is a little bit more rugged. So, let's get to it. We're going to take our Marmarino that's already been colored to match because I want this finish on these walls to be rich and luxurious. So here's what I'm going to do. Come across my ceiling and come down. Here's my corner. Work out. Hear that aggregate? I mean, it's... I don't know why. Is it, the reason I do it is because this is going to even out surface imperfections. This is coat one. It's going to be my bed coat. This is my foundation for everything. I want it pretty smooth. Not super, super smooth. It's not that big of a deal. Because I'm going to come back with my second coat, and that's going to make this very smooth. So I can do my gorgeous Grisello. Get some movement in there. Don't make it uh, all go the same direction, okay? A little bit more, and that's it. Okay. There you go. Now, like all lime-based products, this is going to dry 30 to 40 percent lighter, so always make a dry sample. But in this case, it was already done for us for a color match, so I'm not too concerned. But I am going to do it anyway to double check, just because it's my project, and I want to make sure that it doesn't go out and uh, look different than what I've already promised somebody. So let's let this dry. We'll come back and get to the next step of the process. All right, so first coach dry. We're ready to move on. And it's good because as you actually, again, see the difference between wet and dry. All right, same thing. See the difference? Lime plaster. Now, what's nice is this is going to be a lot easier because it likes to go into itself or stick to itself better than it does just the primer. And we're going to be able to get this pretty smooth. I mean, we can actually get this super, super smooth. And that's what we want because this is going to be our base for our top coat, Grisello. Oops, I made a no-no with the line. That could come through if I'm not careful. Meaning you don't want to make those hard lines and patterns, distinct patterns. More and that's finished. Now I'm going to do like a just a little gather up motion. I don't want it. I want it smooth, even, but I don't want to start burnishing yet. I don't want to get to that stage. Just clean my trowel off a little bit and just come up here. Slight compression, nice and clean, smooth. Let it dry. We'll be back for the Grisello. Okay, our Marmarino has dried, and we're about we're moving on. So, tools for this step: we're going to need our good set of trowels, or the trowels we designate for our filtered, smooth, fine plasters. 
Okay, and we're going to take our Grisello. Now, this color is rich, and the product is a little thinner than it would normally be because it has a lot of pigment in it. But, um, like I said, it was tinted at the factory, so that's wanted to make sure that I didn't have any issues with color breakdown or things like that. Let's get some Grisello on our trial, and let's do this. All right. See the difference in those colors? Now remember, it's two totally different materials, but it's okay. We're going for that Rolls Royce of the plaster finishes. So yeah, this room is going to be a six coat plaster application. Primer, Marmorino, Marmorino, Grisello, Grisello, wax. It's a lot of trips around that room. It's going to be gorgeous. And again, this is going to dry a lot lighter than when it's wet, as they always do. It's lime. See how easy it is? I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. And it just goes in, and what that did is kind of backfilled some of the Ma Marino. And I've got a base. So instead of trying to go over like bare sheetrock or prime sheetrock or just smooth, smooth plaster, well, if it was super smooth plaster, it'd be one thing. I could probably get away with it. But these walls are, they're, it's an old house. It's over 100 years old. Let's say you have orange peel in your house. You can knock, uh, like if you're out in the southwest or, oh gosh, anywhere in the south or out in the west. Florida, Texas, Arizona, Nevada. You guys have that orange peel. Out here in Maryland on the east coast, we don't get much orange peel. We have smooth walls. Um, but this is a great way to get rid of that orange peel. Okay, we're going to let this dry, come back, do our next step, and go from there. First coat of Grisello is dry. A couple darker spots here and there could have dried a little bit longer, but it, it'll be okay. We can do this with the Grisello. We can do the wet into the wet. Second application of the product of the Grisello, same thing, same basic thing. I know it's kind of the same movement, but it, I don't repeat the exact same pattern, so it's not going to be the exact same. And I'm going to put it on, I'm going to use a little bit more pressure to apply it, because I really want to get it into, I want, well, I want to get it super smooth, and this is how that helps. Whoops, doing it again, I'm getting myself a line right through the middle of the board. Now this is also a small trial, meaning it's the smallest one they make, small, medium, large, and because I'm using a small sample board, so I have to use a small trial. All right, we're going to let this firm up for a little bit, come back, and we're going to apply our burnish coat. Okay, it's firmed up. Now if I touch it, it's going to still come off of my hand because it's damp. That's what we want, damp plaster. I'm going to put my hand here to stabilize this easel because it's a little wonky, and using just a moderate pressure. I'm going to start going in a couple different, in one direction, having a rag handy in case I grab any junk off the sides, and I'll come from a different direction. And what I'm doing is applying pressure, not muscling it, not trying to kill it. And I'm compressing it into itself, and that's going to make it shiny. Always keep a rag handy. Once you scratch it, you've got some trouble. Remember, these are really sharp. We're always working on the edges. So it's kind of con we're continuously sharpening them. So be very careful. Okay, that's probably, that's good enough. It's not probably. I could sit here all day and make a sample board look amazing. And if the client's willing to pay for that, that's one thing. But we have limitations on the job site, meaning we're still going to make the walls look amazing. There's no question about it. 
It's just some, I've been in workshops where people sit there all day and just keep burnishing and burnishing and burnishing. Remember, these are a flat sample. Some of your walls aren't so flat. Let's take a look here and see what we got. Ready? Oh, it's still wet. Oh, yeah, look at that. Or it's still damp, it's not wet. I have to look off the side, I apologize, because I can't see what I'm looking at if I look directly into the camera. Isn't that pretty? Let's let this dry, wax it, and send this off for approval. Okay, so our finish is dried. Let's put this protective wax on there. You don't always have to wax, but this job, they want this plaster to be as luxurious as possible. So I'm gonna put the wax on there because it's gonna darken it up, richen it up, make it pop. You don't have to, but it's always a good idea to seal or protect your finish and we're gonna just try it on. It's a paste wax. Look how dark it's gonna make it. When it's, all right, so it's sucking all the moisture up out of the wax. No big deal, it'll lighten up. The biggest thing about wax, don't put it on too thick. If you put it on real thick, you're gonna have problems, meaning it's gonna dry gray, cloudy, hazy. It's gonna be a mess. Now it's gonna get real dark to begin with, but it will lighten up. Take your time with the wax, just don't rush through it. It's a clear wax, so it's pretty forgiving. If it was a pigmented wax, metallic, iridescent, something, you put it on real sloppy, you're gonna see sloppy application. Okay, we're gonna let this firm up and polish it up. See you in a second. Okay, our wax is firm. We're gonna grab some lint-free, color-free rags. I'm gonna use cheesecloth. Actually, when I do this project, don't be surprised to see a car buffer on site um, to knock these big walls out. And here we go. Oop, need to use a circular pattern motion. You don't have to go crazy. Reason I'll use a car buffer because I want to get it done quickly. All right, peel tape. Let's see where we are. Get off my hands. One thing I can't take is tape on my fingers. All right, look, there we are. That's dry. There it is, right? Let's swing it in. There it is, Grisella Venetian plaster. Beautiful. Okay, that's it. Okay, I want to thank you for watching. If you don't mind, please hit the subscribe button and hit like. I would really appreciate that. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach workshops and I base my business out of to complete commission projects all around the country for various clients. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.